I'd like to call the October 16th, 2024 special board meeting of the Ross Valley Sanitary District to order. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Director Meggs? Here. Director Kelly? Here. Director Silla? Here. Director Gaffney? Here. Director Borstein? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now we will adjourn to closed session. All right. I'd like to reconvene us to open session. Uh, there is nothing to report from our long, wonderful closed session. <laughs> um, I'd like a motion to approve the agenda, unless anybody has any changes. Wait a minute. Second. Aren't we doing the last part, the last one we did? The last closed session item. Oh, that well, we have an open. We have an agenda item on that. Thank you. That's agenda item number seventeen. 17 yeah. Um. Yes. Motion for the agenda. A second. Okay. Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now, time for public comment. We have a lot of public here. Um. So, any of you all may address the board. Although Christine has collected some names, I believe. Is that correct? I do. Is it okay if we just go in order? Great. Okay. Great. And. Oh, oh, do you just want to welcome? <laughs> we don't have a lot of public come to our sanitary district meetings very often. Yeah. Uh, we're primarily responsible for moving sewage. Um, we <laughs> and we try to do so to the best of our abilities. Uh, we have wonderful staff. This is our brand new building as of just um, a couple of months ago. So it's really wonderful to have you all here. We're gonna give everybody three minutes. We'd love to hear whatever you have to say. We're not allowed to talk or engage or debate or discuss what you have to say to us tonight. So- I'll And your just, name doesn't have to be on the list. Yeah, and I'm just gonna, after you say whatever you wanna tell us, I'm gonna say thank you very much um, for being here tonight because uh, those are the rules. Great, I see a lot of head nods. Take it away, Christina. Okay, great. First we have Shana Kenny. <laughs> you might get a lot of that. Good evening. My name is Shana Kenny, and I'm the owner of Golden Hills Academy. I've reached out to many of you over the past several months um, to express my deepest enthusiasm about purchasing 2960 Kerner Boulevard. Our joy is to bring it back to its original purpose as a school for children with special needs. Golden Hills Academy is Marin County's lifeline for families whose children learn uniquely. I've brought many supporters here today um, to tell you exactly from a parent's perspective what it means to have a school and a community that understand, understands, accepts, and celebrates your child. These parents will tell you, you are only as happy as your unhappiest child. And they have all been in the trenches with their children until they found us, Golden Hills Academy. So we're here to encourage you to sell 2960 Kerner Boulevard to us. This property is uniquely specific to our needs, not only because it was initially built for students in 1977, <laughs> but because it holds one of the only use permits left in this county to operate a school for children with special needs. While I know there may be other interested buyers, they have the opportunity to work out of any office building in this county. We do not. This use permit is highly valuable to us but also we see ourselves creating a larger community on Kerner Boulevard and providing our students with opportunities they don't currently have. When I walk into your old reception area, I see a library. I see kids learning to read for the first time. I see a book fair where these parents can introduce their literary favorites to their children. I see hope and pride in my families where they were once hesitant that their children would ever be able to be a part of a typical school activity like a book fair. When I walk down your old halls of offices, I see classrooms, I see an art room, I see a science lab. I can hear the kids running to their parents and their grandparents with their schoolwork for the day. When I look at Steve's old office upstairs, I see our oldest kids getting lockers for the first time and memorizing their lock combination. I also see a giant slide down those two steps, but I don't think my insurance agent sees that vision with me. <laughs> I see a future at 2960 Kerner, not only for my students, but for our community. 
When reviewing all the documents on the property at San Rafael's building department, it was noted several times that the planning department wants to see the building maintain its purpose, a school for children with special needs. I ask you tonight, the board, to help maintain that purpose. Thank you. Thank you. That was perfect timing as well. Next, we have Leo. <laughs> Leo? Thank you. So I'll do that one. <laughs> Hi, uh, good evening. Um, I'd like to share with you guys our experience uh, with Shana and her school and uh, persuade you the uh, indispensable value that she offers the community in Marin. So our son Jacob has been at Golden Hill since he was six years old in 2020. And we'd been trying to place him in the public school district for nearly two years at the time. During these two years, the district diagnosed Jacob with high functioning autism, then proceeded to systematically exclude us from Mill Valley School District education opportunities. This exclusion included withholding information, refusal to answer questions, and denial of the existence of any special day classes within the district. And this experience is actually very typical and common. And at the end of the two years, we were exhausted. Uh, we felt completely ostracized from the school district and effectively cut off from our community there. And we on honestly wondered if we can even stay in the area uh, because there was nothing th for our son. Uh, Jacob spent what was supposed to be his kindergarten school of 2019-2020 at home. And the, uh, when the pandemic arrived, we were ordered to stay home and, social di and socially distance. So our son was not only not getting an education, he wasn't getting any socialization. And it didn't, and at that point, it was more of the same and we were alone in almost every way. Then came July of 2020 and we decided that we would look at private schools uh, and Shana School came up and uh, it served the exact kind of kid that, um, that the school district, that, that our school district was failing. Kids who are exceptionally bright academically, uh, but need extra help understanding uh, social skills and have sensory issues and behavioral issues in school that would prohibit them from being in a classroom of 20 kids. Um, and uh, from the moment we spoke with Shana, we felt welcome and accepted and included as a family. And finally, we found uh, we, we could be a part of something. After two years of being excluded, uh, not feeling uh, and feeling taken for granted, we heard a yes. And we have uh, a spot. And she said that we had a, another spot, one more spot in the little class. And if you want it, it's yours. And we can't wait. And I'm quoting here, can't wait to uh, for sweet Jacob to join us. And this is after several uh, other private schools had also refused to give Jacob an education. Um, and let's see, I cannot tell I cannot tell you what it meant to hear those words and feel this acceptance and inclusion. This is what Shana brings to her school every day. And this is what each child feels at this place when they're able to learn and grow and feel good about themselves. And I would like to urge you to please um, uh, sell this building to Shana because what she provides for these kids is not available anywhere else in Marin County for these kids. And these are kids that would be otherwise marginalized and fall through the cracks. And me personally, I had this experience growing up with the, with the public school system. And it was one of the most, it was the most traumatic experience of my entire life. And had I had a school like this to go to, things would have turned out a lot better for me as well. And I'm just grateful that my son has her in her school and um, I urge you to please consider selling the building to Shana because there is no better use for it, I promise you. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna have to start monitoring time, which is not really my strong suit, but um, let's try to keep it well, to under yeah, three we minutes. Can, we can always suspend the rules. We've okay. done that before. Okay. Uh, Christina, who's next? Next, we have Nick Nolan. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Nick Nolan. Uh, I'm here also on behalf of my wife, Jessica Nolan, and Grace Nolan's family back at home. 
Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, my son, Grayson Nolan, attends Golden Hills Academy. He's in the first grade. I cannot stress enough how much Shana and the Golden Hills team have meant for our family and how much of a life changer it has been for us. Grayson has absolutely thrived at the school for almost two years that he's been a student there and our lives are immeasurably better for it. Prior to Golden Hills, Grayson struggled to regularly attend school and we were often come, called to come pick him up early. His teachers ignored him and his development was not a priority. He was viewed more as a problem than as a child. Mm. This impacted Grayson, not, not only Grayson, but our larger family as we could not maintain a regular schedule. Golden Hills immediately embraced Grayson with open arms and love and support. We've seen him flourish at school as they support his unique needs of combination, his needs of combination of patience and kindness that allows him to get the most out of his developmental goals. I re encourage you guys strongly to sell this building to Golden Hills Academy and let them restore the building to its original intent to serve as a special education school. The property is well suited. There's a real and timely need for these 35 families that rely on Golden Hills Academy for the special education their children so desperately need. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Teresa Preston Warner. Good evening, members of the Ross Valley Sanitary District Board of Directors. My name is Teresa Preston Warner and my husband, Tom and I have three children here in Ross. Our middle child is named Daniel. This is Daniel. <laughs> He's eight years old and he attends Golden Hills. He's been there for the past three years. If you've ever seen your child struggle to make friends or struggle to succeed in school, you know that feeling of desperation, um, wanting your child to be included and appreciated and treated fairly. When my husband and I attended parent-teacher conferences before this, we geared up for hearing about our, our kid barely being able to meet academic standards. And for other kids, taking pity on him and partnering with him, peers didn't treat him as an equal and his teachers were only focused on his challenges. Then we found Golden Hills Academy, a school for kids with neurodivergent characteristics that make them a little different. In our case, in Daniel's case, it means that he has trouble talking, which is called an apraxia of speech. He has trouble using his body. He has gross motor and fine motor delays, and he has trouble interacting. He has autism. Daniel's fifth birthday was one month after he transferred to Golden Hills. At his old school, I'd been terrified that no one would RSVP to his party. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling of sending out an invitation to a party and wondering if anyone was going to RSVP. I was worried that parents would force their kids to attend out of a duty to be nice to everyone. But here's what actually happened. I sent out the invitations to the Golden Hills families and on the day of Daniel's party, every single kid in his class attended. And they attended with parents and grandparents and nannies in tow, because it turns out that um, other families surround their special needs kids with a lot of support and cheerleading and a fair share of anxiety about their kids being in social situations, just like we do. And during that fifth birthday party, all of the kids ran through the park with crepe paper stringer streamers tied around their middles, sort of trailing after them like rainbow tails. And Daniel led the entire group through the, through the woods, yelling, let's go tails and this way tails. And I have never seen him happier. He had found his tribe, something we all desperately need. Over the past three years at Golden Hills Academy, Daniel has thrived. He's learning to read. He's asking for play dates. His teachers, who are here today, are the heart of the school, and their creativity, perseverance, and humor are matched only by the children they instruct each day. This is a school that cannot end because a pastor at a church has decided that he wants to reclaim their current leased space. With much diligence, 
Shane Akini, the director, has found us a new location at 2960 Kerner Boulevard. She is organized, wicked smart, and she will follow through on every detail. She will be a fantastic owner of this new property. My husband and I are intending to lead the financing for the project. We believe in Shana's expertise to build a durable school in this new location that will serve and educate hundreds of special needs children in the years to come. Moreover, in this new space, Golden Hills will grow in with them into a middle school now that there'll be more square footage. Kerner Boulevard, as Shana said, is ideal for this school due to the walkability to a children's gymnastics facility right down the street and to a children's music program right across the street. I couldn't be more excited. Golden Hills Academy is a bedrock of the Marin community and it must find a home in this new location in order to continue to serve children with special needs and their families now and in the future. Thank you for listening and I urge you all to consider their bid. Thank you. <laughs> Claire Koshland. Um, I'm just going to keep this really short. Um, my name is Claire Koshland, and this is my son, Simon. He's seven. Um, and I just wanted you all to see his face because I'm here representing him um, and his needs for Golden Hills Academy. Um, and I really just want to echo uh, what these other parents have said, that um, my child, Simon, is lit up from within. If you had asked me this two and a half years ago, I I mean, two and a half years ago when he was first diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, I, I was very scared. And um, coming to Golden Hills Academy has uh, changed him from the inside out. He's a different kid than he was. And I think that this smile uh, really reflects um, the changes that I've seen in him since being at the school. So I urge you to consider our bid and I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Megan Ortiz. Hello, Ross, Fam Ross Valley Sanitary District board members. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of Golden Hills Academy. My name is Megan Ortiz, and this is my fourth year as the pre-K and kindergarten teacher at Golden, Hill Golden Hills. I came to GHA following a career as a one-on-one -on -one behavioral assistant for special needs students and a member of the of the United States Coast Guard. Serving the youngest GHA students means that I am often their first experience in a classroom setting. This can be a scary time in their lives and my priority is always to teach them the joy of learning in a safe environment. Behaviors such as maintaining personal space, expressing themselves through words and participating in group activities are taught with gentleness and consistency, setting the foundation for their future education. Structure is extremely important for these little ones, providing them with an environment where they can advance at their own pace over the course of elementary and middle school years, whether returning to mainstream school, which is always our goal, or remaining at our academy, gives them the tools to learn and grow into responsible and contributing young adults. Your property be, would be a wonderful use of public land for the greater good of the community. It would allow GHA to expand to further serve our current and future special needs students and provide jobs for myself, a Marin County resident, our current staff, and to hire more teachers. Special needs teachers enter this field because of the children. Seeing them thrive at GHA brings us personal pride and we develop a close bond with the students and their families. It absolutely takes a village to raise a special needs child and GHA is the heart of that village. We provide parents, siblings, and other family members with necessary support and the tools to complement our curriculum so the student receives a holistically complete education that continues after they leave the school grounds. In addition to being a teacher, I'm a single mother of three school-age children who do not have special needs. They often spend time in my classroom and have learned patience and compassion from interacting with our students. They always look forward to visiting and participating in the fun activities, especially in the summer. Golden Hills Academy is much more than just a job for me. It allows me to contribute to the Marin community and particularly to the future of our children. 
I urge you to please allow your property to become the new home of the Golden Hills Academy. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. <laughs> John Fahey. Hello, uh, my name is John. Uh, my son Carter was diagnosed with autism and ADHD uh, last June. Um, he was previously diagnosed the, uh, the April before with a praxis of speech. Um, his public school experience uh, in Novato was less than ideal. Um, most days we'd pick him up and it would be discussions on what he didn't do today, how he couldn't sustain attention for more than a minute. He didn't uh, sit at circle time. He wouldn't get out of the car if a certain teacher wasn't there on a day. Um, you know, it was pretty emotionally draining, I think, for myself, my wife, and most importantly, Carter, because it was clearly an environment he didn't thrive. Um, fast forward to today, Carter has been at Golden Hills for eight weeks. He is excited to get out of the car. It doesn't matter which teacher is there when Carter arrives. He puts his bag up. He runs back outside to the front of the car line and greets every student that walks in that day along with their parents. Um, his excitement there to go there on a day is something we've never seen before in our child. He enjoys soccer. Um, he's never taken up sports before. Um, he was in a diaper when he started at G GHA eight weeks ago. He now is fully potty trained from the support of the teachers there and is watching his classmates. Apraxia's speech, um, when he started, he probably could say four to five words of a sentence. Now is almost speaking in full sentences on a daily basis. Um, and a, a place that, you know, we can see his parents that was needed for him and, you know, gives all his parents a, a place to send our kids and, and they're accepted. So on behalf of the people and, and parents and families that came before me, the ones in this room and, and the ones that will have a chance to go through Golden Hills going forward. You know, I, I'd love to see you guys choose uh, Shana and our group is the ones that purchase the building. Thank you. Thank you. Camille Tack. I really loved him to take that one. <laughs> This is a picture of my identical twin sons from a video. I'm looking at the first one tomorrow. <laughs> this photo was taken by Miss Megan hmm. on their second week. Can you speak into the microphone a little bit? I'm sorry. <laughs> this picture was taken by Miss Megan on their second week. Uh, earlier this year, my husband and I stood at our local public, our public school on their TK tour with other local parents. And I knew right away that it was not an option for our twin sons, Roman and Leo. They were already having difficulties at the public school, preschool that they were in. And we were at the process of getting them assessed. We decided to enroll them in the summer camp at Golden Hills Academy to see if they were a better fit. I cannot express enough the amount of relief and our entire family felt and our caregivers felt once Roman and Leo were celebrated for the amazing beings that they are. The Golden Hills Academy the uh, faculty were not only able to keep my, them, my sons regulated throughout the day to attend an actual full day, but the boys came home with stories of new friends and backpacks full of fun projects to share. I am new to being a parent of neurodivergent children. And I'm new to the anxiety of finding a place for them to thrive and learn. When I received this devastating email explaining that Golden Hills Academy would need to relocate and fundraise to remain open in December, I felt this anxiety for a third time this year. The following day, a group of parents met to discuss next steps and as I looked around the table, I could see that they were not new to being parents of displaced children. We need more schools for children with special needs, not less. The community cannot afford to lose Golden Hills Academy. 
and neither can my family. That is why I'm here today and asking you to please choose Golden Hills Academy as your buyer for 2960 Kerner Boulevard, Boulevard so that the building can be converted back to its original service to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Courtney Fillion. Dear Ross Valley Sanitary District, we're writing to implore you to sell your property at 2960 Kerner Boulevard in San Rafael to Golden Hills Academy. We understand that this property was originally designed and built to support a child development center for children with autism. With the property in capable and caring hands of GHA, many children and families will benefit by returning the property to its original purpose of being a safe haven for those who never had additional care and support in their most formative years. Why are we supporting GHA? The quick answer is because we believe in their approach in developing children who don't fit into other programs offered in Marin County. And beyond, before we, found G, before we found GHH, we were in a school district left with no option but to go out on our own and to find a school that met our daughter's needs. We were lucky to find them and have seen incredible changes in our daughter from her behavioral regulations to access her learning to her actual joy of going to school. The story is common theme with children and families attending GHA. We imagine there will be plenty of interest from other commercial businesses and investors, but we believe there is no better purpose for this property than to support our most valuable assets, our children. This is my daughter, Olivia, and we have three children. Two of them are doing amazing at Balacito but Balacito was not the home for our daughter. Golden Hills Academy is the home for our daughter. She's thriving, she's happy, she loves us. It's just, the smiles are everything compared to our last year of, I can't even say the words, but she's changed our lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Thomas Preston Warner. Hello, members of the board. Thank you for listening to us all tonight. I think you can tell that there's a lot of support for Shana and the school that our son Daniel goes to. You heard my wife talk about Daniel beautifully already, so I'll just add a few more words. When he was really young, he was diagnosed with apraxia of speech. He just wasn't really talking the way that our other older child was, and we became concerned. And so we took him in to be evaluated and they didn't really tell us much. We didn't know much. We got an, a, a, a diagnosis of apraxia of speech, which is like, okay, he's having trouble speaking, but we didn't know why. About a year later, we actually took him in for genetic testing and we discovered that he has an ultra rare genetic disease, a deletion on his CNKSR2 gene that leads to the kinds of intellectual disability that he has. And so we know a little bit about why Daniel is different from other kids, but that doesn't make it easier to get him an education and to find his people in the community. And so we've tried him at different schools. We tried him when he was very young at a Montessori school. He had an amazing teacher there that gave him a lot of attention and it was actually working. That school was in Sausalito and it sadly had to close. After COVID, we tried him at a different Montessori school uh, here in San Rafael or just down the road, uh, Marin Montessori School, where our other two children were going to be enrolled. And he was there for a semester. And when we went and talked to his teachers, it was clear that he was not succeeding in the way that kids in Montessori schools often do. And so this environment wasn't working for him. And so mid-year, we pulled him and we started looking for other schools. Now, when you look for schools for special needs children, there's not a lot of them around. There's only a handful here in the county. 
And each one specializes in different ages and different kinds of special needs. And so really, if you find a single school that actually meets your needs for your special needs kids, it's like a miracle because otherwise you're looking at moving to a completely different location to find service for your child. And so we were amazingly lucky to find Shana. And it was immediately apparent to us in talking to her that she was building the kind of school that was exactly for the kind of child that we have. I grew up in Iowa and my mom is a special ed teacher. And so I had some exposure to special needs kids. Now she taught severe and profound kids, which are the, the sort of lowest functioning of kids. And what I realized in watching her teach these kids is that there really are superheroes in the world. And those are the teachers that work with kids that have these special needs. It's really something that you don't see unless, unless you're in that world. It's sort of invisible to everyday life for parents of neurotypical kids. But when you see it and you find those people that operate in that sphere, it's remarkable. Like it takes a really amazing person to do that. And so we had a chance, my wife and I, to see the property on Kerner Boulevard and see it with Shana and walk through it. And it's remarkable. It fits the needs of these kids so perfectly because of its history. And that in and of itself is remarkable. And Shana, I think, has been, has been drooling over this property for, for some time because of how amazing it is. And not only that, but it's actually larger than their current school, which would allow her to expand it to serve later grades. And one thing that we've been stressing about right now is what's gonna happen to Daniel as he gets older, because there is no school in this county that fits his needs when he ages out of the property that they're currently in. So thank you again for listening tonight. I really hope that you consider Golden Hills Academy for the building. It would be an absolute miracle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tyler Hurd. Hi. Uh, I don't know if I can say any more than everyone already <laughs> said, but this is my son, Oren, Aww. and we searched high and low for a school that would make sense. And when we met Shana and saw Golden Hills, we were like, this is it. It was the only school where we knew that it would be right for him. My wife's an occupational therapist. She knows all about special needs. And she was like, this is the right place. And so it was a huge load off to know that our son would get exactly what he needed. Um, and he is. He started in August and it's going great. And he's happy all the time and he's learning really fast. And we couldn't be more happy with it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Director Silla, that's the end of the list. But I do have people online unless there are any more people in person who would like to speak. Anybody else in person? Okay, great. We'll go online. Oh, oh, hand in the back, in the middle. Hello, Ross Valley Sanitary District. Uh, my name is Pierre Dennis. I am the PE teacher slash athletic director at Golden Hills Academy. Um, I've worked at Golden Hills for about four years. It's my fourth school year. Um, I've worked with kids at San Vincent School for Boys um, for about six to seven years. So I've been around kids pretty much uh, my whole working time. Um, I don't have kids myself. I'm 31. My girlfriend's sitting right there. <laughs> but I love these children. Um, there's nothing you can convince me about these kids that wouldn't shake me to want to fight and go to bat for them. I mean, you've heard all the parents talk about it. You've heard my director talk about it. You've heard my fellow teacher talk about it. Um, we love these kids. We love these kids. We're ready to work for these kids. And just the opportunity to have a more open space that's more available for them to have the needs that they need met, you couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, I my walk of life isn't the same as a lot of these parents here, a lot of these children here, but I still put in my in. I still put in my 100%. And just like every one of these teachers here. So it's perplexing to me that we have to fight for something that I feel like should already be in our hands. I'm sorry for speaking so boldly. But I mean, we're here to serve. 
we're here to serve. We wake in morning, <laughs> we wake up morning all the time. We're fighting through traffic. I mean, I don't, what more, I don't know what more to say besides what these parents have said and what my people have said. We're here for these kids. We're wanting to give them everything that they need, everything that they can't serve or they can't receive from other places. We're the place for them and we're not going anywhere. So thank you for listening and I appreciate you guys. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, we'll go online now. Okay, first, I just want to say if you would like to speak online, please raise your hand. The first person who will talk is Cheryl. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, fantastic. I will be brief. Uh, my son, Colm, is very unusual. Uh, so unusual that originally Marin County pretty much put together a class around him and a few other boys because there was no place else for him to go, uh, you know, in the public school system. Eventually, it was clear that that wasn't going to work. Uh, his behavioral therapist recommended Golden Hills. Uh, I re read the website. and was like, are they in my house? Is there a camera here? How do they know? Uh, long story short, what I learned uh, in the process is that uh, Marin County and I think also Sonoma County really don't have special day classes for moderate to severe ADHD kids. They, there's just no other place for them to go. So I think that speaks to the uh, growing success of Golden Hills Academy in that they're meeting an unmet community need. So I hope that you will uh, very much consider uh, giving them this space, which will allow them to accept even more kids uh, like my friend Colm. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have Christy Love. Hi there. My name is Christine Love, and my son Carson Love is a fifth grader at Golden Hills Academy. He started last year after a very long search for a school placement. Um, I don't know if your children have ever been rejected, but my child is super smart and has been removed from every single school he has ever attended. And it was debilitating and crushing as a family to try to figure out where your child wouldn't feel negative about themselves in a school setting. It was so bad when he was in the fourth grade at a charter school here in Marin that he actually tried to hurt himself at school. He would elope. He had a behavior interventionist, um, a very large six foot five guy who could tackle him while he was on the run. Um, mm -hmm. He was told that he wasn't smart, that he couldn't pass. Oh, excuse me. This was third grade math. He would run away from the school, putting himself in harm, grab tables and throw them at teachers. And there was a time where he hurt himself so badly jumping off a second story um, building at school that a paramedic had to hold his head in place for 30 minutes until the ambulance arrived. When he stepped into Golden Hills Academy for a trial date at the end of third grade, I had no hope. Um, and immediately Shana responded, we love him, can he stay? And having a place where I don't get called every day at 10.30 a.m. to pick up my child because he needs a break, where he is accepted as, for who he is, where he has not thrown a table, nor tried to run away, nor hurt himself, nor goes to school with a giant six foot five person to tackle him when he's about to hurt someone, or himself is the biggest gift um, in our lives as a family. Because as a child gets older, we start thinking six more winters, five more winters, four more winters, until this person is an adult and expected to do all the things that society expects them to do. Without Golden Hills Academy, my son would not have a place. And so that's why it was beyond crushing to receive that email that we would be displaced. Um, I hope you consider us um, for the property because there are children out there who just need to be loved, 
put on the right path by adults who know what they're doing and they are successful. My child is not behind academically anymore. He surpasses kids within his age group. He just needed to find people who saw the light in him. And the staff at Golden Hills Academy does that. And without them, I don't know what we'll do, especially moving into middle school. There's no place in Marin for him at this point, unless Golden Hills Academy can grow into middle school. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I'll have Miranda. Hi, can you hear me? Um, I am a grandparent of my incredible grandson, Barrett, and he has been um, in the school for two years. And I just want to add my name to the hat of people asking you respectfully to give this school a space to exist. I've been a Marin County resident for over 40 years. And I know there is no other place that serves these children um, in the way that this school does. And we need it. We need it in this county. We need it in this community. And Shana's vision is one that I want my community to support. The, the school has been the first place that my grandson has found community. And while we have ups and downs, as all of these families do with their children, and as probably all families do with their children, this school has been the consistent place where we work through them, we find growth, we find smiles, we find the freedom to actually leave our children um, and not fear uh, their safety or that there's someone there that loves them. I respectfully beg you to recognize that this is more than a money decision. This is more than um, a decision about what could be there. This is a decision about what our county needs and what should exist in this, in this town, in this community. And um, I very much hope that you all can see that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Rose. Hi, Rose. Would you like to speak? Um. Sorry, my daughter is here. I can't speak right now. Annie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll move on to Cameron and then we'll go back to Rose when she's ready. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I just want to make sure that you can hear me right now. My name. Oh, go ahead. I can see you talking. Oh, yes, we can. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Cameron Hetrick, and I'm the mother of an eight-year-old. Brilliant. So sorry. A brilliant little boy was found. I thought I was going to do this. Um, that was found an amazing home at Golden Hills Academy. Um, there was recently a Surgeon General warning that parenting can be hazardous to your health. What they didn't study is the parents of special needs children. As you can see, the parents that have been sitting here and sharing their journey, we take an extra weight. So sorry. <laughs> There's an extra stress that we all carry that is my child gonna thrive? Is he gonna make it through the school day? Am I gonna have to leave my job early? Am I gonna have to explain something to my, my superior at work? Am I going to have to step out on the commitments that I have made to help take care of my kid? When your child is thriving at a place like Golden Hills Academy, it takes that pressure off 
Children are smiling, they're happy, they're learning, they're being loved, they're really being encouraged by every single staff member of this school. They are just, have been amazing. Shayna gets on the phone with me, she'll FaceTime with me after school if we need to talk something about Connor. Mr. P drove my child home the other day because a caregiver wasn't able to pick him up and walked him in while I was on a Zoom call for work. Megan has done swim lessons for my child and has gone the extra mile to really show him that he is loved and special. So I urge you to bestow this gift on this community and for the future generations of these kids. <laughs> that will just be a true, true gift to give us a place and a home where we can have a place for these kids to really thrive. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next person is listed as GHA supporter. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, I also have a name. My name is Allie Lane, and I'm really grateful to all of you for spending your evening in the service of our community to listen to bids for um, for your property and to listen to us parents um, for whom the school means so much. Um, I don't know if there are other bidders for this property, but there is, I can't imagine a greater public service being done to the families of Marin County than to enable this building to be used for, for a greater good, not just as office space or for an investment property or whatever other reasons people buy buildings. Um, we live in San Anselmo. We bought our home here a few years ago. We are customers of Ross Valley Sanitary District and really appreciated your sewer lateral help at our house. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> we um, we also hope to stay here for 20 years. I'm a Marin native and our boy is a Marin native and our daughter, who is three, um, is also a Marin native. They are both on the autism spectrum. And uh, I didn't know this whole side of Marin existed really until we had um, two diagnoses on our hands and a six-year-old and a three-year-old who needed a little something different. And we absolutely loved our local school, Brookside Elementary in San Anselmo. We think they're fantastic. They were just unable to support Grayson in the ways that he needed, um, especially with eloping. I love that this property is at the end of a street. That is such a comfort to me to not have a, such a danger with running into the road. Um, he is sensitive to hot and cold. Um, the fact that this building could hold heating and air conditioning in a way that our current school property can't um, is, is pretty impressive also, and I know would really help with his regulation. Um, the biggest, the biggest um, um, difference, though, between Brookside and, and Golden Hills has been, obviously, as you can hear, is, is the staff and the environment and this positivity and really seeing our boy as, as a joy and as a contributor rather than a problem. Um, we spent uh, the last six months of last school year from February to May, especially, but even prior to that with him out of school entirely. He's a first grader, so he missed half of his kindergarten year after being suspended 18 times from school um, for activities that would have not happened, that don't happen anymore. This agitation that he gets when he feels cornered or he feels misunderstood or he feels threatened um, by staff who really do mean well, but didn't have the skill set that the staff at Golden Hills Academy has. And so the idea of being able to keep him at Golden Hills beyond fifth grade by moving to this building, there would be older grades that could be supported. And I, um, I feel like it's just, it's the main difference between going towards being a kid who's in contact with law enforcement and a kid who is a threat to um, to people in Marin, to someone who is just a beautiful person and able to really succeed in society. And Golden Hills has really brought that out in him in a tremendous way. Uh, he hasn't had any aggression since he started there. He hasn't had any elopements since he started there. He's just been um, really a different person. And I see the way that that can contribute to our county on an individual level and in a community way. So thank you so much for your time tonight and for considering our bid. Thank you. Stacey Drescher. Uh, 
Okay, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, great. Um, I don't really think I can add much more, but I'm looking at and this. I only could see the board members. I can't see anyone in the audience and their tears and emotions, but I, I just want to say a few things. Oh, I moved to Nevada two years ago with my family. My son Julian is in fourth grade at Golden Hills Academy, and it was an amazing discovery because just like a lot of these other parents, we tried public school. We have an IEP. The school district just could not need, give him the services he need. We tried. And, and so we found Golden Hills. And last year, this is the second year, nobody called me to pick me up. Nobody had called to tell me that my kid had done anything to another. You know, anytime there's an incident that happens, it's a discussion. And it's a discussion between parents and teachers who understand that your child is, is, would be considered a misfit in any other school. And these kids are not, when we, I hate to use the word low functioning versus high functioning. A lot of these kids just don't fit in the box. They're like the square peg in the round hole, meaning they do not need one-on-one -on -one care, but they do need something in between than a, a special, a, a general ed class or even a special ed class that I've, I've seen at, at the school district. So anyway, I just want to say a couple of things about the teachers and about Shana. They are wonderful people. They do this because they love our children. The other thing is this school, we're, we're not rich people. And a lot of people that attend the school, we are not the Marin wealthy. <laughs> this is a school that's most is much more affordable than a lot of the other schools for special needs kids. And you have to remember that when you're, we're both working parents, I make less money because my kids take so much time and I spend more money because they ha have so many special needs and services. So giving this this property or letting the school buy it is not just you know make you feel good for the good deed for the day but it's also serving an under serviced um population that's all thank you thank you very much cheryl is your hand up again She can't talk. <laughs> Learning. Yeah. Hi there. I got back in line because my son, who is eight, his name is Colm, really wanted to speak on behalf of the school and why he thinks it should be approved in the new location. What do you have to say, bud? I love the teachers. They are super nice. They can help in any situation. Are super nice. And I just love being there. There you Thank go. You <laughs> oh, they can't see anything. No camera, no camera. Thank you. That's the rest of the people with their hands up. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I don't think I've seen so many tears in the sanitary district meeting ever. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to move on to the rest of our agenda. You're welcome to stay. It's a lot less exciting than this. But thank you very much. You've been heard. <laughs> All right, now we'll move on to committees. Uh, Tom, do you want to give us a report of the finance committee? Yes, the finance committee. Uh, Are you on? Thank you. Finance committee met yesterday and we did our usual thing. We went over the, um, the finances for the month. We continue to be in excellent condition. Uh, we listened to a presentation, which is just coming up from, uh, Mr. Gibbs, and then we reviewed the uh, very interesting project, the uh, Heather, Heather Gardens uh, pump station. And uh, anything else did we? No, I think the main discussion was, was about yeah. the bonds. Yeah. Um, and the finances, well, Jim's... as usual, look great. Yes. Victor's making the reports even more beautiful than they were before. We're, we're in the low income average expense month, which means uh, we're spending down our reserves, but that's planned. That's the way it works. Uh, thank you. Report on CMSA. Sure. Start, um, Doug. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> um, we renewed, a, or yeah, we, we've been doing um, force main operation and, and maintenance agreements with Sanitary District Number 2, Corte Madera. Um, so we uh, approved a three-year um, renewal of that work for them. 
And um, their rep did uh, abstain from voting on that. That's right. Um, we're looking at doing a faci facilities structure seismic study. The, the buildings are all on blocks and they keep going, the dirt keeps going lower and lower. And, you know, it's just time for us to make sure that if there's an earthquake, the building's not going to come down. So they're just doing a seismic structure uh, review, which makes sense. Um, we talked about the hydrogen peroxide facility relocation feasibility study. That is because there's a, um, a facility in Larkspur landing area near our property that that's not no longer in use, but not not that property where we have a de um, de smelling anyway. um, odor scrubbing. Thank you, odor scrubbing. <laughs> there's a there's a property um, uh, that's about to build there, and um, the question is, uh, we have large trucks that go there. Um, they're um, saying that um, they want us to use smaller trucks and they don't want us to have the access we've had. Um, uh, we agreed to facilitate the study, but we did not agree to pay for it. Um, we agreed that if the property management people want to pay, they were, they were asking for do it 50-50. And we just didn't think that's right. And we also are arguing that um, we have full use of that uh, easement, including the, the area where the trucks turn around. Um, so that's a little bit of a dispute we're working on. Uh, we approved um, billing San Rafael Sanitary District for all the expenses up to date for their um, uh, plans to um, have CMSA do things for them. I'm going to leave that at that. Um, <laughs> the next motion was a, a motion by um, Ross Valley Sanitary District request for them to for us to suspend the ad hoc subcommittee that is putting together uh, thoughts plans, aspirations, notes uh, on the um, San Rafael Sanitary District to CMSA work. Um, we have a dispute on that one because uh, the two Corona Madera reps did vote on that measure. We don't think they should have um, with hmm? San Rafael. San Rafael. Um, and uh, had they not voted, it would have uh, passed that the um, ad hoc committee was suspended. Um, they voted on it, so we're in disputes with that. We're working it out. Um, it's been informational items, nothing much of interest. And the next scheduled meeting is not November 12th, but November 7th, because we had a bunch of things going on. So that was about it. Anything else you want to add? Um, no. I Yeah, no. Thank you very much. That was a great job. Uh, North Bay Watershed Association. I know we got an email about that right with the report you know Pam? i can just give a quick report great christine yeah um yeah i sent all the minutes out they're they're a draft but it was a very fun outing they are developing mare island and <laughs> it is a beautiful area i don't know if you've ever been there but during vietnam i used to go grocery shopping there about it a couple times a week and they're really honing in on the waterfront. It is just, there's a brewery there. So uh, Andy, it was a great invite, I have to say. Um, and so they're looking at all the sewer and the infrastructure of the sewer. So that was the presentation. The other presentation from Kent Fortner was all the historic background. You know, I think during Vietnam, it was, they had, they made one nuclear sub there and it, it sunk the, the the buoyances they kept trying to adjust and they kept adjusting to it where it sunk so anyway um and the other thing was a guest presentation by ann gertz a pe senior engineer with west yost and she uh, brought forward highlights from their island infrastructure assessment project which is covering covered the water and sanitary sewer, storm drain, and flood control roads, and dry utility systems. So, if you if you ever have time, go out there. And there is a funky museum out there, but it is really beautiful. Thank you. If I could share one very quick story that they told about a <laughs> no, very very quick story. But... If you were at the CMSA meeting, you heard the story there, right? Yeah. Go ahead. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> How did Mare Island get its name? General Vallejo, the first capital of California, was in Vallejo, California. 
And then they moved it up to Sacramento for whatever reason. And General Vallejo built a place for himself in Sonoma County, in the town of Sonoma. And he was transporting all of his livestock via the river uh, up to his new property in Sonoma. And the boat capsized and all of his livestock drowned, except for his prize mare, which they thought had drowned, but then the next day it climbed itself up onto what is now Mare Island, and that's how it got its name, according to the historian. That's it. Thank you. A verbal report by the general manager, please. Oh, thank you, uh, President Silla. I don't know how I can follow that, but I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure it out. <laughs> how Mayor Island got its name. Um, just two quick items. Um, uh, on the Larkspur Landing property, uh, as I mentioned last month, uh, the city of Larkspur adopted the general plan and housing element that changes the zoning on our two parcels in Larkspur Landing. And so this month we met with our real estate development team and they recommend that we develop a proof of concept plan for the Larkspur Landing site um, based on these new guidelines that have been adopted. And the proof of concept would be illustrative maps of what could be developed on the site, including um, the perimeter corporation yard we were talking about for our pump station 10. So uh, that's under development and um, we, we may be able to share that with the board as soon as the next uh, regular meeting, but we'll keep you posted. And that, that's just a proposed uh, potential idea. That doesn't mean they've got to follow it or it's, yes, it exactly. kind of follows the zoning, I suppose. Yeah, and then, and then as we've talked before, you know, ultimately there'd be an RFP process, you know, to yeah. um, choose a developer to work with. And this would give, an, like I say, a proof of concept mm -hmm. that, okay. that they could work with. Um, and, you know, it's an opportunity to get the city uh, to to be on board with that too, because ultimately they um, they're, uh, have the general plan and housing element that anything that is proposed at the property needs to um, be in conformance with. Um, so that's that. And then number two, uh, I just wanted to make a note that last week was Water Professionals Week and our clerk, Christina <laughs> Winicky and administrative staff celebrated our talented staff and their public service um, each day having uh, either snacks or refreshments, beverages, one day a lunch, uh, thanking them for their service and professional approach to making sure our sewer system works without interruption. And um, so that was a nice um, hmm. gesture and well, very well organized by Christina and, and staff um, and made, made the place a happy place to be last week. And really, that's all I have. So, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, verbal report by board members or requests for future items? Seeing, oh, well, I have one, and it's kind of on the consent calendar, but I wish everybody who's going to go to CASA can sign in tonight because then we can reserve the rooms. So what do you mean, sign in tonight? Just let Christina know that let you can. Christina planned to know that. we're going to go or not, if you're going to go or not, and then she can reserve the rooms for us. I, is it I'm, is tonight when they're becoming available? Is that right? Well, no, it isn't. Well, oh, oh, you want to let them know tonight? Got it, got it. We ran out of rooms last time. Yeah, yeah. To clarify, What's the date the twenty ninth to the thirty first, January. And the, the the you can reserve when right the now? rooms are not available yet. I have emailed Cheryl. She said in the next week yeah. okay. it so, will so. be available. But I'm checking every morning. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'm planning on going. Pardon? I'm planning on going. I'm going to. Where is it? Palm, Palm Desert. Palm, okay. you, Palm if Springs. If you think you're going to go, you might as well sign up because we can cancel the reservation too. So that's Sounds four. like four. Yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Tom. Uh, all right. Now we'll move on to the consent calendar. Does anyone have anything they'd like to pull off of consent? Nope. Consent calendar. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, item number 12, receive a bond sale workshop presentation and authorize the district's municipal advisor, Sperry Capital, to issue a request for proposal for bond underwriting services. Yes, and I'll uh, ask 
Felicia Newhouse to introduce this item, please. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> um, last month, the uh, board approved uh, contracts with the district's um, bond uh, financing team, uh, Sperry Capital and Hawkins uh, Delafield Woods. Um, in the anticipation of uh, refunding the district's 2013, 2014, and 2018 bonds. Uh, tonight's meeting is a presentation um, from Jim and uh, his associate Marina, uh, Bonds um, 101, kind of a, a recap of the bond issuance process and specifically the refunding opportunity that the district has with the three bonds that I just mentioned. Um, along with that is a request uh, to authorize Sperry to issue an RFP for bond underwriting services. Uh, I have a copy of the draft RFP if any of the board members are in interested in the details of that um, process. And otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to Jim with a note that uh, Martha was going to be here tonight to remind Jim to keep it short, but I suspect that that's going to be Marina's uh, role this evening. <laughs> I, I, I knew she would be. Just that I had to... <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and with that, Jim, please. Yes. Unless, Steve, you want to, to mention anything more about that? I, I understand you were involved with Mare Island, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we got to keep this short. Oh, I was going to say, does, does he have, have a short, child who wins good and goes short, to Golden Hills? Short, story. All right, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, during the Vietnam War, I served <laughs> as a naval officer for four years on active duty in the nuclear power program, ah. which was fascinating. I spent three weeks at Mare Island and I observed the submarine Guerrero as it was being assembled, dropping its instruments and machinery through four rectangular holes in the top of the hull. And three days after I left and went back to Washington, it sank at the dock. Mm. The reason being that they were testing the tanks that changed the attitude mm. of the submarine. And they had two different teams with two different sets of controls and they got confused mm. and they sank the submarine. That's <laughs> my, I worked for a, pretty famous guy named Admiral Rickover. Mm. And with that mistake, the salt water fried a lot of valuable stuff. Wow. I'll just leave it at that. He was very unhappy. I hope somebody lost their job. <laughs> Two or three of them. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank, thanks for that story uh, the true story yeah it's great Are you in charge of the process jim that... i have nothing to do with it. <laughs> that's your story now sure <laughs> okay here we go the other comment i just going to make in passing is you know I'm, I'm here to talk about the fascinating process of selling bonds i didn't expect to hear an extraordinary touching story. So I was stunned. So, okay. Um, so we're gonna talk about how you're going to issue bonds to save money. And um, we're gonna just kind of walk through the process starting at a very simple basic level. And um, so we are Sperry Capital. Jim and Marina are here. Martha, who did have a very large potential role this evening, um, got called off to another client meeting. So I'll do the best I can. Uh, let's go to the first slide. So as I said, starting at the really basic, what is a municipal bond? Uh, you're going to sell probably 40 or $50 million in bonds, and uh, it's good to understand the product you're selling. So what is a municipal bond? It's a fixed income security uh, issued by a state or local government entity that pays a fixed rate of interest semi-annually and pays the face amount on a stated maturity date. You may have purchased them before. 
The bonds are issued in multiples of $5,000. The maturities may extend to 20 or 30 years or even longer. Uh, but like a home mortgage, the annual sum of principal and interest each year, that sum is equal. So you're a company, you're accustomed to setting your rates to pay debt service on your bonds. It's a fixed annual amount. Under current law, the interest income to the bondholder is exempt from California and federal personal income tax. Uh, <clears throat> most bonds uh, carry investment grade ratings from triple B to triple A. Uh, there are a lot of them in California in 2023. There are 1,800 different bond issues sold and the total is $70 billion. So you're in the midst of a big process. Next slide. So Ross Valley Public Financing Authority. When the district needs external financing for your capital improvements, uh, the RP, R, the authority, <laughs> uh, issues revenue bonds and um, the, the district formed the Ross Valley Public Financing Authority in 2012, specifically to enable you to borrow in the tax bond market. The um, board of directors, you serve as the board of directors of the authority as well. It is a separate governmental entity but it's yours. Uh, for each bond issue, the district enters into an installment purchase agreement with the authority. You're doing business with yourself. Uh, and that's critically important because that establishes that you, the district, are going to make payments to you, the authority, uh, every year so that the authority, in turn, can pay off uh, the print pay the principal and interest on the bonds that it has issued. So the authority sold bonds in 13, 14, 18, and 19. And today uh, the total amount of bonds outstanding is $81,940,000. Uh, maturity dates range from 2025 to 2044. Uh, Fortunately, the bonds are sold with what we call a call option, which means that the district, you, uh, can arrange to pay off the bonds at par uh, on uh, a call date that was in the terms of the original bond deal. And so on January 1st of 25, uh, out of these four bond issues, uh, that's all of the bonds outstanding in the first three, which will be $53,395,000, uh, will be available to call. You'll be able to pay them off on January 1 or any day thereafter at their par amount. So this slide, number five, summarizes very quickly uh, the facts about the four issues that you have outstanding. Uh, shows what they are when they were originally closed, um, when the next call date is. And uh, the, the important thing here is that uh, for the first three issues uh, on the 1st of, of January, you'll be able to call them or redeem them at, at their par value. So you can see over to the right, a for October 1, you have 81,940,000 in bonds outstanding. Uh, on January 1st, uh, three of the issues you can pay off in full, which is what we're gonna do. Okay, you have a, a in your financial policy, you have a debt policy, uh, which, states as it should that uh, you you can refinance your bonds um, on their call date or uh, you also have as a policy matter uh, the option to uh, to sell bonds 
escrow the proceeds and use those proceeds to call bonds later. That's called an advance refunding. What we're going to do is sell bonds to pay the bonds off January 1st. That's called a current refunding. There's no delay uh, before the, the old bonds are paid. Um, but very important in your policy, you won't do any of this unless there's a very clear financial benefit. So here comes the next bond issue. It'll be the authorities, Ross Valley Sanitary District 2025 refunding revenue bonds, series A. So on or after the 1st of January, um, you can sell bonds to redeem those 53 million and odd bonds at par. And if we assume that you sell them in the same market conditions as existed on September 30th, you should re realize over $7 million in cash flow savings over the remaining uh, 20 years of their life, which is uh, in our business, that's a really good deal. <laughs> um, so from here on out through the slides, we're just gonna talk about how you're gonna realize that good result. So here's a quick summary, summary table of all, all of the pieces. And uh, we've listed sort of the impact of the transaction on each of the three bond issues that we'll be uh, redeeming. Oh, far right-hand side, all you need to worry about is sort of in total, uh, where are we going? So these numbers reflect an assumption that you actually close the bonds on January 23rd. We don't know today exactly when we're gonna close the new bonds, but that's close. So this is an example, financial example. Uh, we will actually sell on that basis $46,935,000 in bonds. It's magic. We're gonna use that money to actually pay off 53,395. That's because uh, the way we're going to price those bonds, we're gonna get a premium from the investors to make up the total that we need to pay off the, the 53 million. Uh, the, as of September 30th, we sell on the same market conditions. The interest rate for the entire package will be 3.23%, which is a lot lower than the interest rates on the old bonds, which is 5%. So you're gonna save a bunch of money. And uh, as I said, the cash flow savings over the next 20 years will be 7.1 million. We also calculate what's called the net present value, which is the amount that we could, it's kind of tricky, but the amount that we could deliver in cash at the closing if you wanted to have the cash up front. Um, great. <laughs> That's enough confusion. What's going on? <laughs> if you have any questions, yeah, yeah, please feel free to ask. <laughs> so here's the schedule that that we have in mind, uh, tentative. So here we are. We had finance committee yesterday. Here we are at the board meeting. Uh, Monday, we expect to send out the request for proposal to underwriters. Um, then we'll follow through with uh, meetings uh, with the board as we go through the whole process. Uh, uh, expect to select the underwriter December 6th. Uh, January 23rd, we will go uh, and seek the credit rating for the new bonds. Uh, and then we will go through the process of getting the rating, selling the bonds and closing, which we've shown happening through January and February. Um, the probably the thing that I wanna highlight the most about the process here is, is going for the rating on the new bond issue. Uh, you have over the course of the years that we've been working with you, 
your rating, every time you sell bonds, your credit rating has gone, gotten better. Mm -hmm. And why? Because you do a great job. And, uh, and you started from kind of a sad condition years <laughs> ago. Um, so right now your bonds are rated double A and we think that you can very well get a double A plus, which is the same rating as Marin Municipal Water District and other strong utility districts in the area. Who knows, maybe someday you get to triple A. I hope we're still here. <laughs> um, so that's, that's it. That's a, an important part of what we're gonna be doing. Getting the underwriter on board uh, is a really important thing too. We're gonna pick someone who's really good, but we're gonna make six of them compete for your business. And uh, so we get them at a really good price. Next, next slide. Oh, go back to the financing team. Yeah, that's good. We're using the same team except we're gonna get a new underwriter. So as I, I said, obtaining the credit rating is very important. Uh, can, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Do you, or, or do you, Felicia, know how many times our credit ratings improved in, in like the last 10 years? It's improved <clears throat> with Fitch at least twice since I've been here. So where were we twice ago? We were A we plus, were... Uh, we were A, A plus, then uh, double A minus, then double A. It's, it's yes. gone up three times. Right. And then we've gone from steady to roughly we're going strong, I guess. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what the the verb was, but yeah. Bonds were either A or A plus. They were A. They were A. Yeah. So we went they went a from A to A plus to double A. Oh, sorry, you're right. There was a double A minus. So they went they went so since I was here, they went from A plus to double A minus to double A. Because <laughs> they only went up twice since I've been here. I was here before you. And yes. <laughs> yes. Fair. <laughs> Tom was, Absolutely. Tom was here before us. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're having fun here. I think there's, only, I think there's you know, along this uh, discussion that there's another interesting point about the, the, the rating increase, which is that it will directly affect the, um, the interest rate. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how am I doing? Um, so this is a good summary of sort of what we've, most of what we've already said. Hold on. The one question, uh, when we get the underwriter on board, you know, they're a very important player, part of the team here. We depend and we're gonna get a really good one. We depend upon their being in the bond market every day because as we go through the sale process and plan out things, uh, knowing where the market is and where it's going and what the value different options are uh, is very important. And they will have an opinion as to whether uh, you should continue to use just S&P on your latest bond issue or whether you should bring Fitch in as well. Uh, this is gonna be a, a bigger bond issue than you've had uh, in the recent past. And that might be a good factor. Ratings are expensive, so we won't do it unless we make. What about Moody's? Instead of Fitch. Fitch. What, what about Moody's? Well, Moody's, We'll find out what the underwriter says, but yeah. you've had, you started the game out with Fitch and S&P back in 13. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, as we've evolved, uh, we let Fitch step aside, but we have stuck with S&P all the way through and it's worked fine. Yeah. Uh, and but it, Fitch, we think Fitch always lagged. is better than Moody's at this stuff. You know, Fitch always lagged. And so that's, 
kind of why we dropped them too. Mm -hmm. We didn't approve of their rating. <laughs> oh, goodness. S and P's, yeah, you've done fine. We like them. Um, so that'll be one, you know, one question. As I said, we think there's going to be a double A plus event. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, the fact, the timing that we did the five year sewer rate increase was helpful. Yes. Yeah. Positive. Very good factor. Okay. So let's see. All right. On to the next. Um, so once we have the underwriter on board, got a rating done, it's time to uh, sell the bonds. And there are two big factors that determine how much the, what the interest cost of the bonds is going to be. One is what, a, what fee are you gonna pay the underwriter? And we're gonna determine, and it's, it is a you know, lump sum, and we're going to get a good fee by making five or six firms compete for your business through a proposal process. And it works great. They, they love Marin County. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're, and they're not going to come to our board meeting with a compassionate, uh, <laughs> this is pure dollar deal. <laughs> got that uh, yeah it's just wall street um okay so how is this going to go so we got them we know what their fee is going to be the next thing and the even more important thing is determining uh you're going to have you know 20 different dates when bonds will be maturing and each you know the bonds on each one of those dates needs to have its own yield that will pay to an investor that purchases them. And uh, determining and getting you the best yield on each one of those bonds is our job with you uh, and with the underwriter. We negotiate with them and we negotiate by going, there's a lot of data now today in the, uh, in the market we get a lot of data first before we sit down with them and haggle a little. And what are we looking for? It's bonds of agencies that have AA or AA plus ratings, where the bond size is similar to yours, where the sale has occurred, you know, as recently as possible. Because that's where the market is. That's in fact, it's the only way we can sort of determine what's going on. And uh, we then sit down, take all that data and uh, sit down with the underwriter. They're gonna have their own information. And uh, that's where the negotiation takes place. Next question. Yeah. Do you know on these bonds, the ones that are outstanding, the total cash we'd be paying if we don't um, refinance? on each of those. And do we know the total cash we would be paying over the, the course of the bond if we do refinance? Yes. Okay. Do you have that at hand or do you want to send that to me or uh, to the, you know, to, to Felicia? And, well, what, are you looking for what we're saving by doing this? Well, yeah. That's I'm, the 7.9 million. Well, yeah, but it doesn't say how much all million. these are cost, would cost us in dollar amounts. I don't see that. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have the, uh, the debt service schedules, okay. you know, year by year for each of the three, I can tell you what we expect the new bond issue, which is going to pay all of them off. But right. that looks like. I, I just, I'd like to get those numbers issue. just so I have them, so, you know, on a piece of paper, this bond measure is if we don't do anything, we're paying off this much money. Exactly. You're not exactly, you know, it's in the yeah. budget. No, it is very exact. Uh -huh. Okay, budget, yeah. and and we can, we can provide that. Thank you very much. Yes, great. Um, okay, so we go through this process with the underwriter, and and determine sort of where we think the bonds should be sold. Each one of those maturity dates amount, what the yield should be. 
Uh, then we sit down and our next objective is to set this up, set the pricing being offered to investors uh, so that you'll get a lot of orders. And uh, we don't want to get lost in what we call chasing the market. The first, the first offer that, that we give to the market, to all the institutional buyers and so forth, uh, we want them to regard as attractive. They already like the credit. They already like, they really want to own some municipal, some Marin bonds. But there's a lot of other things being sold. You know, there's every day, there's a lot of bonds in the market. These are tax deductible. Pardon? And these are tax free, correct? All tax free. In yep. All California, you know, 50 billion. In the, 70 billion in the year. And um, so we want them, and this is sort of a, a delicate thing, a judgment thing, but uh, we want to tinker with, you know, the rates, the yields that we're putting on all these bonds so that we're going to get a lot of orders. And the benefit of getting a lot of orders, more orders than we have bonds to sell, is that we can then... Uh, tighten up the pricing, you know, before we sell them to the underwriter in full. Um, so uh, you will all be along for the ride. <laughs> We've done this before. Yep. It works well, but uh, it's actually kind of fun. Okay. Well, that's- It feels that's, like it's been too long. I mean, you know, what, yeah, what was it? Yeah. Summer of 2019? I mean, that's that's- Five years, it'll be five and a half years by the time we do it. Thank you very much for the presentation, Jim. I appreciate that. And if the board has any questions for Jim tonight or follow-up questions for staff and or our financial advisors subsequent to this, um, we welcome those. And we'll also be back with the next steps at the next board meeting and subsequent board meetings. Great. Do we need to, or is this a... This is a, there is a motion to be there made is a to, motion authorize. to authorize the district. Yes, please. Municipal okay. Yes. Thank right. you. Does it, yeah. Any questions or I'll entertain a motion. We authorize the district's financial advisors, they very capital issue a requested proposal for bond services. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Hey, Jim, hey, who do you think you're going to send it to? Probably. Who do you? I, I can read off some names that we have in mind. Yeah, um, Hills Academy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should just give them the property. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. There are six of them. Uh, Loop Capital, yeah. which is where Rob Larkins is. Uh, Stiefel, they've underwritten your bonds before. Uh, Hilltop Securities, who you've been visited by, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Oppenheimer, Wells Fargo, and Morgan Stanley. Okay. And uh, you know, we're not we're not insisting that these these we think these are good ones, but if you have others, we're all ears. And is it just one more point of information that the uh, plan is to hopefully uh, release the RFP on Monday, the 21st of October. So if you did have any edits or comments on the RFP that you wanted to mention, that would be, that would be timely to receive. And this is it here. Yes. Thank you. And, and the finance team, we don't decide on the underwriter. You pick the mm -hmm. underwriter. No, so you will pick the underwriter. We're going to get we're going to get six proposals in. We're going to review all them and then bring them back to us. And we'll give you a recommendation. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. <laughs> oh.
All right, item number 13, consideration of authorizing the general manager upon review and approval of council to execute a cooperative agreement with the city of Larkspur for the Heatherwood and Heather Gardens pump station rehabilitation project, project 908. Great, um, thank you, President Silla and board. Um, this item is a proposed cooperative agreement with the city of Larkspur, uh, because as we've been briefing you over the, the months, including when this project was designed, um, this, and we have Phil is joining us uh, remotely, um, and uh, in a minute I'll hand it over to him. Um, but a little background on this. Um, we, uh, because we're co-located, uh, and there's a storm drain pump station and a sanitary sewer pump station co-located that need to be separated and raised in elevation uh, so that it's resilient to sea level rise um, and modernized uh, and it doesn't have a risk of cross, um, you know, the cross flows from the storm drain getting into the sanitary sewer, which is an issue today. Mm -hmm. Um we it made most sense to have one designer, which you approved months ago, uh, Shafam Wheeler, uh, designing our half of the pump station. He also the, they also designed the uh, half uh, for the city of Larkspur. Uh, but we've been working cooperatively, meeting uh, during the design phase, and then uh, as we formulated a proposed bid, um, working cooperatively with them, uh, the city of Larkspur. And um, we issued a notice inviting bids. And then around September 4th, the city of Larkspur adopted a version of this reimbursement agreement. Um, we're structuring the project to be the lead agency for contracting here at the sanitary district. It was um, mutually decided that it made sense for us to be the lead because of our experience in managing pump station rehabilitation projects. City of Larkspur could do just a great a job, I'm sure, but they don't do as many, you know, we, as you're very well aware, we've rehabilitated, oh gosh, you know, eight pump stations. We're in the process of working on three right now. Uh, so the city is confident in us in being the lead agency in managing contracts uh, for its, the construction of both facilities. And then um, we structured the bid uh, very clearly so that it's clear which items are city items, which items are district items, and which items are shared items as we would move forward through a construction project. So uh, getting back to my point on September 4th, City of Larkspur adopted a reimbursement agreement because they needed to, in their process, approve the city, you know, the staff to go out to bid with the project. And so we were managing that and then they uh, adopted a version of this agreement. We've since reviewed and seen a need to add that we would split construction management uh, costs because um, it's, it's virtually identical, the, the different projects, you know, between storm and sanitary. So it works well to hire one construction manager, another item on today's agenda. Um, and so we did edit the version that the city adopted on September 4th to include construction management services split 50-50. And uh, that's the version of uh, the reimbursement agreement that's in draft form on this agenda item today. Um, we've had some good success, as you can imagine, working with the city of Larkspur on reimbursement agreements recently. There was an item you might remember, it was on in November, I think, of last year, uh, where, you adopt, where you approved a reimbursement arrangement um, where they were working on a replacing a roadway and storm drain system on Shady Lane in Larkspur, not Ross, but in Larkspur. And we, they, they uh, got a bid to replace the sanitary sewer and we reimbursed them, or I think that's how that worked. Yeah. yeah. So is that, and that's, so that was a successful transaction with the city, even within the last year. So uh, we propose a similar arrangement, but in this case, they would reimburse us. They're going to be participating in this project weekly at weekly construction meetings with us. Uh, and it's a, it's a great team that we have assembled. So that's uh, my overview of this idea of a reimbursement agreement. Um, and uh, I'm not sure, if, uh, Phil, you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks, Steve. I just uh, 
very excited to to begin uh, this cooperative uh, project with the city of Larkspur. As, as Steve mentioned, we've got a pretty good history working with the city of Larkspur through that previous reimbursement agreement, as well as on paving projects when replacing uh, frame and covers on our manholes. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll um, notice on the later item um, for award of the construction contract, how the bid items are broken down. There are shared items between the city and RVSD that are, uh, you know, items that are hard to parse out anything other, you know, they're, they're, they're equally shared between the two parties. And then there are a set list of bid items that are exclusively for each of those two entities. So the city and RVSD items and that, will uh that that makes that portion of reimbursement pretty clear and then we've also included a provision to split the cm right down the middle and it's um it's great to see uh this this you know uh collaborative effort it's it's uh the um there's economies of scale with with grouping a project together in this way and we streamline things you know if you imagine ha trying to have two uh separate construction contracts happening at the same time it would make uh tr at least triple the work uh for everyone involved and we've reduced that uh considerably by having one streamlined project even just from construction but also we were at a great experience collaborating with the city and our designer shop and wheeler and it's just you know uh good good government in action is everyone working together and definitely uh is uh inspiring to look for more more opportunities to work together with the city and other jurisdictions uh, thanks for those comments phil i uh, would point out that uh, that bid uh, tabulations on board packet page 93 if you didn't already have that in front of you but just if as an illustration of how we've clearly uh, parsed out in different uh, bid items and then the ones at the top are the shared uh, items that will split 50 50. Um, thanks, Phil. Um, and then I guess we're available for any questions. We also have Rory Marlowe here who's with uh, SOMAS and on the next agenda item, but he can answer questions about constructability. Right. Items 13, 14, and 15 are all intertwined because yeah. they are all on the same project. Yeah. So, so uh, could we combine them and yes. vote collectively on the three? <laughs> No, no, still never, do them separately. Never mind. Um, okay, yeah, this makes this perfect. it makes perfect sense. We're but we we are more experienced. They could probably manage it fine, but I'm glad that we're managing it. We're more experienced. Um, and we've worked with Somas and Rory, and he was at the finance committee meeting. So um, I'd make a motion. Any other? Um, I have a general question. Sure. Yes. Change orders. Is there something in here that talks about change orders and who would pay for the change orders? Um, that that's a great question. I um, it it doesn't. I I I don't remember the exact language on it. If it's in the agreement, I think it is actually. Yes, it is specifically called out in the agreement. Uh, the change orders, if you know, they would either fall into one of those three categories, either being an RVSD item or a city of Larkspur or a shared item um and the areas of work you know if they're related to the any change order would most likely come out of one of those areas and should be pretty easy to define um but you know we would we would work with the city if if anything uh needed to get sorted out but it is called out specifically in the agreement thank you Uh, all right. Hearing nothing else, may I have a motion? Yeah, I'd, I'd move to authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council to execute a cooperative agreement with the city of Larkspur for the Heatherwood and Heather Gardens pump station rehabilitation project, which is project number 908. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Item number 14 consideration of approving and authorizing general manager upon review and approval of council to approve tax order 11 
<laughs> for the construction management services for the Heatherwood and Heather Gardens Pump Station Project 908 with SOMAS. Thank you, uh, President Zilla. Um, and as you mentioned, this is uh, clearly related to the previous reimbursement ag agreement. There's just sort of a cascade here of items. So um, we have Rory Marlowe here from SOMAS. Um, as we detailed in the staff report, uh, we're, we're thrilled that they're available to continue to help us supporting these pump station construction projects. They also um, have helped us with gravity sewer projects as well. Uh, but uh, their availability is a is a, a blessing for our district. You know, in this instance, it's, it's great to have a team assembled that knows our procedures, knows the flow of work, um, the expectations in our weekly meetings and how to structure the agenda to be most productive and most efficient, uh, engaging the contractor um, as part of that team um, and being productive. These days, uh, as you've heard, either directly or indirectly, pump station projects are really challenging uh, due to long lead time items. It was already challenging before the pandemic, but since the pandemic, it seems to have been exacerbated. Uh, there's been uh, you know, less entities available out there, people going out of business. And so um, it's just hard to get turnaround times that, and it interferes with the um, profitability for contractors uh, because of them having to hold on to, uh, you know, to hold on to risk and cash waiting for long lead time items, items to be delivered and that they can uh, bill the owner for. So uh, I, I bring these issues up and I encourage Rory and Phil to speak to them as well. But that's part of what SOMAS has helped us manage is kind of to keep these projects on track and not do, you know, watch the burn rate of their budget to make sure they're, that they're staying under budget given these long lead time items that, that wreak havoc with these projects um, and, you know, not falling off course. We've been able to manage that the last couple of projects with the pump station 14, 24, and 25. Right now we're working on the 20, 31, and 32. This one is known as 30, uh, but we know we'll be facing the same type of issues and really glad that SOMAS will be there with us to help manage it. So uh, that's, that's my commentary. Uh, Phil, I'll hand it to you and then we'll, we can hear from Rory. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, just to build off of what you, you had said uh, regarding SOMAS's experience with our pump station projects, and just pump station projects in general, I know that Rory is working on multiple other pump station projects with other sanitary districts in the area. And he draws on that experience to, you know, give us a frame of reference for what we're, we're dealing with, with these, these long procurement times. It really does uh, help guide us through this process that, you know, is, is, uh, has evolved in a post pandemic uh, supply chain here. So, yeah, I mean, ha ha my hat's off to Rory for his help on all our projects, especially the current one. And as Steve mentioned, you know, that uh, our, our most recent completed uh, pump station project there with pump station 14, 24 and 25, that that project ran quite, uh, you know, it ran a lot longer than expected. And Somas and Rory did a fantastic job of managing that schedule and and keeping meetings to the to a good fit uh to where communication was still flowing but we weren't at the same time uh you know burning through billable hours and they came out under uh under budget on their previous contract uh, even even given all of those conditions um their their price for the uh the current project is uh roughly 10% of the engineer's estimate and which is typical for what we would see for construction management uh there the um the the price when you compare it to the actual cost of construction is around eight and a half percent so very reasonable in terms of the cost and again it's uh shared between RVSD and the city of Larkspur uh, I'll turn it over to Roy Marlowe and uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's been an ace on all our pump station projects as well as the uh, gravity sewer project that we're wrapping up right now. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks Phil. Um, yeah. We're kind of excited to get the opportunity to provide another proposal. I think continuity in these type of uh, projects is what st helps streamline processes. And so, 
we're now going into another set of I've been involved directly myself on station 14, 24, 25, 30 uh, is another exciting addition and currently we're working on 20, 31 and 32 so we get familiar with the district and their needs and, and how to kind of satisfy the operation staff and try and um, kind of uh, take that lessons learned from previous projects, carry them into new projects and, and that's how you kind of um, hedge off potential issues that arise early in, in these projects. So um, like the folks said, it's kind of unsure times when it comes to procurement of material. Um, the district do a good self when, when working to pro um, produce a design and consider that setting a reasonable time frame up for the construction of the project. But we're still ambitious in, in getting material in a timely manner. And early on in the projects, we'll, we'll work with design and work with the contractor to kind of start to get the most realistic time frame in mind and, and when things need to go slightly quieter from a administrative and, and kind of um, management point of view, it helps both us, it helps the contractor. So we're not there to just kind of be uh, <clears throat> meeting unnecessarily and, and billing unnecessarily. If there's opportunities for both us on the contractor where things can kind of go to more infrequent contact um, and then as construction um, dials up we also then increase our frequency and increase our coverage this particular project um, it offers it offers some different challenges that there are other lift stations hadn't it's um, two different municipalities so a little bit more coordination another layer to uh, add in when considering decisions but um, we're, we're used to dealing with multiple agencies around the north bay and so um look forward to hopefully getting to work on this one as well. Thank you, board. Any questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'm, I, I'm of <laughs> approval uh, I, I, to authorize the GM upon review of council to approve task order number 11 for construction management services for the Heather, Heatherwood and Heather Gardens Pump station rehabilitation project number 908 with Somus Inc. in the total amount of 331,408. And half, the, half of that's going to be paid by Larkspur. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. <laughs> Thanks very much, Phil and Rory. Oh, I guess we're going to have you guys stay for item number 15. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you, President Silla. <laughs> and yes, now we get to um, uh, the actual uh, contract. And there there are some wrinkles here, and I won't give as long of, of, of an introduction to this, but um, we did receive four bids. Uh, we opened them on uh, October 5th. Third. Third. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, not, and it gave us time. There's a one week uh, bid protest period that passes before uh, we put this on the agenda. So we're glad to let you know no protests were received. We received four bids that were, um, I would say, clustered in around similar values. Um, they're above engineer's estimate. And it does have, uh, as I stated in a previous staff report, um, and with more detail, I, I, it's there for you to refer to, but uh, in the um, item 13 staff report, I spoke of how, yeah, these, these bids now make the overall project cost about a half a million dollars more than I originally budgeted based on earlier cost estimates. Um, it was 2 million, now it's 2.5 million. So we are going to manage that aspect, um, but we still believe and it's it's manageable you know with our capital reserves and, and cash flow and other potential sources of in income that you heard about earlier this evening uh so uh we think that this still is a good value for the district and it's not just staff or phil and i but also you know we've really engaged the team rory uh the city of larkspur uh, the designer schaffen wheeler and everyone's contributed to this recommendation before you under this item to to award uh, the contract to the 
lowest responsive and responsible bidder, bidder Disney construction. Uh, but it is it does have some wrinkles to it. The bid is um, irregular in some ways. And so there's documentation in here about the details of that. But I think maybe I'll hand it over to Phil to describe those issues that we're managing the risk of and feel like this is still a sound recommendation. Phil. Great. Thanks, Steve. So as, uh, as Steve was describing the irregularities that we've noticed is if um, you're able to look at a um, page 93 of the PDF of the board packet. And also exhibit one up in the yes. right corner. That's right. Um, board packet 93. It's the last page of item 15. So it's just before the 16 tab in mine. Yeah. Yeah. Should look like a big table of uh, mm -hmm. values here. So what you'll see where the, where the irregularity has come up are under items, uh, six bid items, 16 and 30 are weighted uh, quite a bit higher than the other bidders you'll see, as well as the engineer's this estimate. Uh, it's about half a million dollars over the engineer's estimate on those items. Uh, and then you'll also notice that items uh, 18 through 23 and uh, 33 through 37, which are, are basically mirror images. It's just uh, one stormwater pump station for the city and one is the storm uh, the sanitary sewer pump station for RVSD. You'll notice that those values are a lot lower. Uh, so what appears to, to uh, be the um, intention with this is that the contractor, we, we as, as we've described these, these procurement issues on projects, it becomes a difficult task for contractors to essentially purchase large electrical equipment, such as these control panels, which, you know, we're, 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 it's looking like the quotes for those were probably somewhere around $400,000. And our measure and payment system is consistent with most public works, uh, public contracts that, uh, we only pay for materials that are on hand. And when your contractor that is uh, purchasing, you know, securing procurement for the purchase and, and to, you know, fabrication of something like a control panel that's $400,000, those particular items right now have lead times that are over 50 weeks at, 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 in a, a good, good scenario. And we've seen them last and stretch you know, beyond the initial uh, promised date. So it it becomes a matter of uh, financing for these projects. So what it looks like Disney has done is uh, weighted earlier items that they could install and get running, such as the pumps and guide rails that you'll see on those higher items. The intention would be that they would be able to install those and then uh, bill, for, bill for the... Um, the essentially the money that they would have spent on the procurement of the control panels and other electrical items that have a longer lead time. Um, this is obviously uh, presents some risk to the district if we were to proceed and to pay that full amount at that time. Uh, but fortunately, our contract has provisions in it that prevents uh, prevents the requirement of us paying out the entirety of those items uh, as they've described them. We can we can withhold a certain portion of payment that would be determined to be reasonable to cover the actual cost of those uh, longer lead time items. Uh, all that being said, the real risk that would be involved in in this if if we didn't have these provisions would be that a contractor might walk away from a project uh, because there's not enough money left to motivate them or uh, if they if that contractor encountered financial trouble and needed to to back off in in those instances um, in this case it's 
that this uh this contractor is is uh responsible uh they have uh met and satisfied our requirements and we know that they're they're a large comp large uh contractor that that handles projects much bigger than this large infrastructure projects so it it's unlikely that they would walk away from uh from a job like this uh and also yeah the um the 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 uh contractor that's bidding on it and project manager that was particularly interested in he just so happens to live down the street from this pump station so i i think that we have enough skin in the game uh for what it's worth to to lay a lot of those concerns to re rest and any additional risk we can manage through our contract that has pretty clear terms to outline that and yeah i mean rory do you have anything to add to that and no nothing major I, I kind of echo what you say is that i the the contractor themselves are the lowest bid their overall bid value is the best of the four that we got received um how they structured it is irregular um i would see that it will likely play out into just a conversation and and we'll kind of highlight it very early on that we understand their intent and and uh we'll try and protect the district as best we can when then we get to expand that bid tabulation into a schedule of values that we would then base our payments off and, and i think at that point we get to have the conversation with how we're going to structure payments through the project and um likely it 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 will be a reasonable and rational conversation with their project manager but shoot shoot it not there's definitely bid language or there's contract language that protects the district um to to withhold reasonable amounts for for uh remain and work in the project so i think um as a regular as it is i i don't see it becoming a major issue so. Next question. Yeah, absolutely. I'd ask both Phil and Rory, um, have have we and then Rory, have you done a lot of work with Disney? Uh I haven't had a project directly with Disney. I've I've heard of them and they're a relatively uh um reputable and large um company via set of burning game. Um and like Phil said, they have key personnel that are uh customers, let's say, of or BSD, so uh, while I have not done a project directly with them, I have not heard anything to deter me from working with them. Yeah, so I I um I don't have experience working directly with them. Uh, I've uh, had projects that overlap with their. On they've been on Caltrans jobs uh, that were in the jurisdictions that I've worked in. So they were doing one with uh, Caltrans for the overpass uh, project, and we we interacted with them quite a bit uh, as they were doing work around our force main. And I, I'll say that they were communicative and respectful of our uh, fifty four inch force main and the uh, as well as uh, sanitary district twos force mains in that area and they uh they proceeded in a way that was careful and 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 respectful uh and, and the communication was good um the other projects that that i've seen them working around i've you know i haven't i haven't heard anything bad uh when we reviewing the bids contacted some of their references and i did not hear any uh negative any negative feedback so the contractor being responsible is is I, what i would consider verified okay thank you any other questions yeah we looked at this at the finance committee and this front loading is a little bit strange but as we were assured that we're going to tell them we know what you're doing here and then even as rory just laid out even more clearly we can set up a billing schedule that makes sure that the sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're very far off above and below some of our right. engineers estimates and the other bids, but they're doing it for a reason. 
and I have a story in my head now that this is not their usual project, but this guy lives nearby <laughs> and it seems like a, you know, way to not have to get up as early and commute to Burling game in the morning, maybe, <laughs> um, for, uh, I don't know how long, however long he can get away with it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that might be the reason that we're getting this contractor we haven't heard of and they've done things a little wonky so that they are sure they get the money they need up front to make it work with their other things, but who knows, um, I get anyway, it. All that said, I'll entertain a motion. I move. It is recommended that the district find Disney Construction Inc.'s bid responsive and find that it is a responsible bidder and award the contract to Disney Construction Inc. The total project costs for the city of Larkspur and the Ross Valley Sanitary District as listed below. Ross Valley Sanitary District, $1,980,300. City of Larkspur, one million nine hundred and fifty thirty-three. Total bid three million. Excuse me, three million. Michael, what are you reading? Sorry, pardon me. The recommendation. Oh, that's sorry. That is not actually. That's that's from the staff report. Go back to the beginning of the item and look at the recommendation on page. Oh yeah, sorry for the confusion. That that's the. That's fine. That, that's the bid memo that you're reading from. So you're getting the recommendation from Schaff and Wheeler there. Go to board packet 79 or 77. Yeah, 79. Got it. Yeah, thank you. Authorize the general manager upon review and approval of council to execute the construction contract for the Heatherwood and Heather Gardens pump station rehabilitation project to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Disney Construction Inc. in the amount of not to exceed $3,930,333. Sorry about that. Okay. Do I have a second? All second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Patrick gets to stay around. No, Patrick Filippelli. No, you're Phil Ben Ledetti. Those names are too much alike That's in it. my head. Thanks, Rory. P. P. Hey, Mary. No. Yeah. Is there any possibility? 17 next because I'm running very late. We, oh, 17. Oh, okay. You want to go to band practice? Yeah, okay. Um, can we move the agenda around? Okay. So we're going to take 17 and 16 out of order. We're going to go to item number 17. Point of information, yes. uh, President Silla, if you'd like to take the next two items at the next meeting, you could do that by continuing them. If that is the wish of the board. Let's do that. And we'll, and things can be retroactive so that, yes. Okay. Um, excellent. We'll continue 16 and 17. It's the general manager's compensation. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I was not realizing that that was also, in the, I was thinking about just 16 and, and 18 a, my bad. I was thinking metrics and, um, okay. And the monthly report. Paul, just do 17. Okay. If that, Paul, if that pleases okay the board. are you with us doing the metrics I next month? I might, yeah. Okay, thank you. You can give us two months of reports next week. Okay. Do you have any stories about Mayor Island? If not, uh, then. Uh, uh, <laughs> although I, I'll take my, I'll take president's privilege and say that he turned off the loud he turned off the loud <laughs> odor scrubber at pump station 15 when I emailed him and it was quieter, but a little stinkier for a little while. And my son would say, it smells because you turned on them to turn off the odor scrubber really literally. And, um, and then it got turned back on really loud on the ninth and it went quiet. And then it got turned back on the 10th and it's just like, mm. so thank you. All right, so I so we'll continue items 16 and 18A, but we will hear item 17 now, which is consideration of um, an manager. amendment to the general manager's contract, no staff report. Um, so we did uh, provide general manager more um, his review. Um, which is very, very, very positive. The most positive review I think we've ever provided and maybe a board has ever provided to a general manager. Um, exceptional scores. 
<laughs> on all counts. Um, I think that this is a great place to work for the people who work here. At least it looks like it is from my perspective. And I think that's just a really important thing that we are doing besides keeping the sewage in the pipes. Um, does any other board member have anything they want to say generally about Steve's review or our happiness with him before we move to the um, compensation items? Phenomenal execution during the past year, during all the years you've been here, but especially during the past. Year. Yes. Um, I think we would be more verbose if we hadn't had the public comment section tonight that we have. Um, but okay. All right. So um, I would ask the subcommittee of the GM review folks to go over I'll, the changes. I'll go ahead and read the, the bullet points. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we did a salary survey. And we found that Mr. Moore's compensation was $59 less than the median general manager of comparable agencies. So the first thing we want to do is up him $59 a month to make him equal with all the other general managers. Mm -hmm. to the, yeah. <laughs> uh, change the termination compensation from four months salary the six month salary in line with the majority of other GMs. Increase the monthly deferred compensation payment from $109 a month to $1,000 a month in line with seven of the nine GMs that we surveyed. Increase the monthly car allowance from 450 to 750 to equal that given the RVSD assistant general manager and operations manager. Fund the maximum of 5% bonus on the current annual salary of 309,552. And then the bonus of that is 15,478. Increase the general manager adjusted monthly salary of 25,855 by a 4.3 COLA, which by the way is exactly what every other person in the district got. Um, and the new salary is equal to 26967 Increase the annual vacation from 20 days per year to 25 days based on the state standard term of service vacation accrual. And extend Mr. Moore's current employment contract by one year. And so uh, do whatever magic needs to be done. Modify the contract. And all right, would you move? Oh, does anybody have any comments or discussion yeah, about that? You're doing a great job, Steve. Yes. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, can that be incorporated into a motion? I move I move all of the things which we just said previously to be amended to his contract. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. So we'll continue. And thank you, Bye. board. It's, a, it's an honor to serve. Thank you. Uh, so that I'll adjourn this meeting and we'll reconvene on November 20th with those two continued items. Thank you very much. Good night.